Okay, now we're going to be doing the thoracic spine x-ray. Now, when you have your patient laying down on the table, go ahead and have them bend their knees up. This takes out some of that curvature of the spine so that the spine is laying flat against the table. And go ahead and lay a lead apron across the lower pelvis. Now, I'm using a 14 by 17 image receptor or 35 by 43 centimeter image receptor. And go ahead and, and have, use the complete length of it. Now, we can collimate in on the sides so that we're only including just the T-spine and not the entire chest. Now, you want to double check and make sure the top of your light field is going to coincide with an inch and a half above the relaxed shoulders. You can also check by palpating the jugular notch because you want the light field to be about two inches above the jugular notch. The jugular notch, you're at the level of T2. And you want to be sure that the light field is not at that level because you will know that you will be cutting off T1. So just double check and make sure that light field is about an inch and a half above the shoulders. Check the mid-sagittal line. Then you can go ahead and call mate in. Okay, and then I've used, I've put placed my right marker on the film already. But be sure and move it in from the edge so that it will be seen on the image. Okay, now when we do the lateral T-spine, have the patient turn on to their left side. Okay, you put your head down. I'm going to have them bring their arms up. And that's have the arms up at about a 90 degree angle, the elbows bent. Now you want to make sure that the back is nice and straight. You want it to be going straight directly perpendicular into the table when you do this. If the patient is leaned forward like that, you know that the back is not nice and straight. You have to have it good and straight if you want to see the intervertebral spaces the best. Now something else you do need to consider when you're doing a lateral thoracic spine is a lot of times on the men they have the broad shoulders and you can see how it slopes down as you go down towards the waist. Now if you want to have the spine good and straight, you can put a little positioning sponge underneath the waist. Okay, come down on that and that will help straighten up the spine in this area here. Now, palpate the scapular tip, the inferior tip here. That's where you're going to see this line cut across. That's at the area of T7. So you want to be sure it's cutting across that. And when you look at the mid corona plane, you want to start at that level. And once you have it set at the mid coronal, you're going to move it backwards like that. So in actuality, you're going like an inch to two inches beyond that mid-coronal because that thoracic spine is posterior portion of the thoracic. So you always want to move it back. You usually see the light curving with the curve of the back and you know that you've included that posterior portion. Okay, so you see the light field here light field to here, and this will be our lateral thoracic. Now, thoracic spines are imaged very well with the patient doing a breathing technique. If you instruct your patient just to take in slow breaths and just breathe evenly, and you set your technique at the generator so that, I mean, it could be like a, a three, four, five second exposure. That way you're getting a little bit of breathing motion within that exposure. And what this does, it blurs out the lung tissue and helps you to see the actual bone detail better. So this is our lateral thoracic spine. 
oftentimes because of the thickness of the shoulders, we have to do the swimmer's image for the cervical thoracic area. Because you really want to be able to see all 12 of the vertebra. So when you do this, when you do the cervical thoracic, you're going to be centered over the area of C7-T1. So you don't need a large image receptor for that. I'm going to go back down to the 10 by 12 or the 24 by 30 centimeter image receptor. Since he's on his left side, you're going to use the left marker. And a nice, a nice point to determine whether you are at C7-T1 is to is palpate the vertebra, vertebral prominence. Now that is at the very base of the neck, and it's that very prominent bony projection at the very base of the neck. That's the vertebral prominence. Now if you put your central ray across here, across that, you know you're at the C7-T1 area. Okay, now next thing is you want to get the shoulders out of the way of each other. So I'm going to bring this one arm down and then this one arm up. Okay, so you can see by here, this shoulder's in this position, this shoulder has moved up. And we're going to take the image right in between the two shoulders so that we can see the C1, I mean the C7-T1 area. And preferably, you want to see all the way down to T4 or 5. That would be nice as well. But once you have it like this, you can column it down just a little bit. And I'm going to move it forward so it's a little bit closer in between the mid-coronal and a little bit posterior to that mid-coronal. And with this image, I would suggest that you have the patient suspend breathing. Another technique, if you have difficulty getting the shoulders separated, you can put an angulation of about 5 degrees caudal, and that will cut through so that it's going in between the two shoulders. Just remember, if you use your angulation to readjust your bucky tray so that it is in line with each other. Okay. All right. Let it turn off. Now we'll do still recording. Huh? It's still 